Hey, I'm Andre. I'm a grad student at Western University, and I study diagrams and approximations. Uh, in case you haven't heard of it, diagrams and approximations, loosely speaking, tries to quantify how dense the rationals are in the real numbers. And an easy way to see this is through an example. Say we're trying to approximate pi. We know there's an infinite number of approximations to it by rationals using its decimal expansion. However, another example is to use 22 sevenths. And by observation, we see that this gets within 1 over 7 squared of pi. Using one of the rational approximations from the decimal expansion, we see that 314 over 100 only gets within 1 over 10 squared of pi. And so this slight improvement in the accuracy of the approximation requires a huge jump in the denominator of the rational. And so one way to look at diagonal approximations is seeing how the denominator of rationals and the degree of accuracy are related. A theorem that does this is due to Dirichlet, and it says the following, that every irrational number, x, has infinitely many rationals that get within 1 over n squared of it. And so here we explicitly see this connection between the rational, its denominator, and this expression of accuracy. And so one way to generalize this is to say, well, instead of being within 1 over n squared, what if we want to be within 1 over 2n squared or 1 over 3n squared? Or what about a more general function that maybe doesn't behave as nicely? That is, what if we take some function psi that's monotonic and we look at the set of elements x that get within psi of n of these rationals a over n for infinitely many of these rationals? Well, is a theorem due to Kinchin back in 1924 that says that this set is going to have measure zero or one, and then we can actually know which one's going to happen by looking at this series. As a sanity check, if we take psi to be one over n squared, we see that this series is going to diverge and we get a full measure statement, similar to Dirichlet's theorem. Another way to try to generalize this is instead of modifying the quantity or the degree of accuracy, what if we look at different subsets of the rationals? For example, what if we try to restrict to rationals where the numerator and denominator are prime, or if they come from some arithmetic regressions or some more general subsets of integers, or even what if we look at rationals that are randomly chosen in some sense? All of these contexts have been, have been studied and have Kinchin type theorems. So the common ingredients to all of these are that we're looking at the metric space R. We have a countable 10 subset, the rationals or a subset of them. We have a notion of complexity, which is often the denominator of the rational, and we have this approximating function. But we can take these ingredients and put them in any other metric space or with any other countable dense subset and modify this notion of complexity and get new types of Kinchin theorems. What we can do now is look at the p-adic numbers, another completion of Q, and see how numbers can be approximated there. So if we take this function psi, that's monotonically decreasing and has this new mild regularity condition. Then we can ask about the numbers that can be approximated infinitely often by rationals a over n that get within psi of now the max of the numerator and denominator. And in this case, let's show it in a 1995 thesis. That this set also has measure zero or one and that we can totally determine it by the conversions or divergence of the series. So now what we have is the rationals, which are a dense subset of both the reals and the piatics. And what we can do is that now that we have Kinchin type theorems in both cases, we can ask, well, what if we take, say, a nice subset of QP, look at the rationals there, and try to see if that's a dense enough set inside of the reals. Let's see what that looks like. If we consider the seven addicts and the following ball centered at the origin, and we use this as a source of rationals, we see that the rationals in this ball are going to be the following form. And so it's not too hard to see that these are going to be dense inside of the real numbers. More generally, we can take the rationals contained in a ball centered at x in some p-adic space. It turns out that a ball centered at x in the p-adic numbers is the same as a ball centered at a rational in that same ball inside of p-adic space. And so the rationals now in this case are very easy, easily shown to be the following. And in the same manner, we see that these are going to be dense inside of the reals. And so uh, now we can maybe ask, turn this question around. Instead of starting with the ball inside of QP, looking at those rationals and moving them into the reals, we can start off with the ball inside the reals and look at the rationals inside of it and ask if those are going to be dense inside of a p space. 
It turns out that those are also dense, and it's not too surprising. In the reals, the metric is Archimedean, and in the piadics, the metric is non-Archimedean. So it's not too surprising that taking a closed set in one leads to a not closed set in the other, or a dense set, and vice versa. What is interesting is that if we take two piadic spaces, uh, take a ball inside of one, and look at the rationals inside of it, it will be dense in any other piadic space. And so maybe as a picture to keep in mind, what we can do is take a ball inside of any completion of Q, R, uh, QP1 for some prime P1, QP2 for some other prime P2, and we take, a rash, take the rationals inside that ball and go on to another completion of Q and ask if those are going to be dense and if they're dense enough. Dense enough in the sense of a Kinchin theorem. What I mean by that is if we take one completion of Q and take a ball inside of it, let's say BP1, again, we have this approximated function psi with the same regularity condition. And now we ask, what about all of the numbers in ZP2, this other completion of Q, that can be approximated infinitely often using these rationals coming from this particular ball? What's the size of the set? Well, it turns out that this set's also going to have measure zero or one, and that we can totally determine it by the divergence or convergence of this series. And so we have another Kinchin type theorem. And the proof of this Kinchin type theorem um, has two parts. First, the convergence case follows from an application of the Brock and Kelly lemma. Uh, specifically, we can show that the psi approximables lie inside of a limb superset, and that's an immediate application of the Brock and Kelly lemma from there. The real heart of the argument is inside the divergence case. Here we have to first show that the measure is either zero or one, and then using the divergence assumption, show that this measure is actually going to be positive. This is going to require some mean variance argument on the number of solutions that basically relies on a Pelé sigma lemma. Unfortunately, there are some shortcomings to the Haar measure and Lebesgue measure. Um, in particular, we see that if we consider the following two sets in the classical real case, um, one of these sets is strictly contained in the other. And in fact, feels like it should be much smaller. It should be much, much harder to be approximated by this function one over Q to the 20, 20, as opposed to one over Q to the two plus epsilon for small epsilon. However, by Kinchin's theorem, both of these have the big measure zero. And so it's not good enough to distinguish uh, these two sets. Instead, we need a finer scale notion of measure to distinguish them, and that's going to fall back to Hausdorff measures. And so in a very similar way, we see that given this approximating function, instead of asking about the Lebesgue measure of these sets, we can ask about the f Hausdorff measure of these sets, where f is some gauge function or a dimension function. And in this case, we see that we have a very similar Kinchin type analog statement in the Hausdorff case that helps us distinguish what's going on with these sets. Thanks.